The final item of business today is a member's business debate on motion number 10053 in the name of Christina McKelvey on One Parent Family Scotland. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put. I would invite those members who wish to speak in this debate to press the request to speak buttons now or as soon as possible. Uh, Ms McKelvey, if you are ready, uh, up to seven minutes, please. Yep, thank you very much, Presiding Officer. And can I take the opportunity in opening this debate to thank all colleagues across the Chamber who signed the motion and, and supported the, the great work of One Parent Family Scotland, which allowed us to uh, debate it today. And can I welcome to the gallery members of One Parent Family Scotland who have come through from the West uh, to spend the afternoon with us and listen to the debate. So um, no pressure because we need to get this right for the people who are here in the gallery today. Presiding officer, you happen to get pregnant at 15 and your mother isn't too enamoured, the boyfriend has legged it and your big sister thinks you're mad to even consider having a baby. You will feel very, very alone. I was enormously impressed when in my own constituency I heard the stories of young single mums who had been benefit from the mentoring of One Parent Family Scotland folk on its Transforming Lives programme. And this programme really transformed lives. When you meet some of the young mums at the start of this process and then you get to the award ceremony and the, 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 the progress they've made, the um, aspirations they have, the goal setting that they've undertaken and the really strong bonds that they have formed with the, the, the women they have met on that journey. The young mothers I met at Whitehill Neighbourhood Centre in Hamilton were a real testament to just what a difference it makes to have a really strong local support in your life. They talked about the lifelong friendships they'd formed during the programme and, and about how they now saw opportunities that had never crossed their minds previously. They were indeed transformed. They wanted to get out there and grab every chance they could for themselves and their children. They'd learned a whole lot about how, what they could do and how they could do it. They learned a lot about their own talents and their own skills and how to apply them positively. Contrary to Joanne Lamont's something for nothing culture, these young women refuse to be caught in the benefit trap. They want something better than that for themselves and their children. And they absolutely merit access to the agencies that can help them move forward. Their children deserve it too. Motherhood and fatherhood is hard work. Ask any of us who have been there and you accumulate a lot of skills and a lot of resilience and a lot of problem-solving um, uh, skills too along the way. One Parent Family Scotland offer a whole range of advice from, from courses to a helpline to down downloadable information packs that cover everything from separation, divorce, fuel energy advice, work, employability, education and even web safety. Their services include childcare, employability, family support and an information and advice service which can be contacted via a free phone number which is 0808 801 0323. This government, Scottish Government, wants every child to have the best possible start in life and an element of that is ensuring that no mum or dad is denied access to the services and support that can help them with their child to fulfil their potential. The mentoring of Margaret McTaggart, who's in the gallery tonight, and she will be having a red face, and I will get a row for it. Um, and her team at One Parent Family Scotland is crucial for the confidence as well as the achievement. And all, presiding officer, one of the, the, the main things that I've seen at the awards ceremonies I've been is the confidence and the trust that these young mums have developed in Margaret and her team. They absolutely trust them implicitly and take advice, advice and guidance and support and make long, lifelong friendships. As Margaret said, it's not about being smart or academic. She says it's about real life, about having the opportunities that will allow you to make a real contribution for yourself, for your child and for your wider community too. Benefits in the UK are tight tightening all the time and young mothers are an easy target for Westminster's austerity regime. The Scottish Government believes this country's children are our future and we are proving that with our commitment to transformational childcare. That's that transformation word again. A very, very important word in this debate. Today's daily record reveals that after speaking for the Scottish Government's input into a report and implement the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child, the Westminster Government then withheld the Scottish Government's position from the final report. In that final report, Westminster Government claims that welfare changes will help to reduce child poverty, completely failing to include any reference to the Scottish Government's position that Westminster's welfare cuts will only make child poverty worse. 
Last week, Save the Children warned that a number of children living in poverty in the UK is set to rise by 41%, from 3.5 million to 5 million by 2020, as a result of flat wages, cuts to benefits and the rising cost of living. That is an amazing figure. That's unbelievable. And you think that every single one of those 5 million is a small child. Poverty is a man-made problem and it can be unmade too, but this Westminster government seems hell-bent in continuing its destructive policies and the children here are the biggest losers. Contrast that to the Scottish Government. Already through the Children and Young People's Bill, we are increasing the available free hours to 600 a year. Come independence, the Scottish Government will go f much further. If re-elected, we will introduce 1,140 hours of free childcare for preschool children. That's the equivalent of a full school week, and it will not only help, those, help close the attainment gap, it will help mothers and fathers to fulfil their own ambitions with the support of our society behind them. The amazing women I met in Ham Hamilton are excited by that prospect. They see how it can open opportunities for both them and their children. They were amazed when I told them that in Norway, the economic impact of women in the workforce is equivalent to that of the country's oil income. Scotland cares about its future generations and we want to see every child as well as every parent fulfilling his or her hopes and ambitions. I have no doubt that many of my colleagues across the chamber feel the same. We maybe disagree on the method of achieving this aspiration and transformation for our children. With a yes vote in September, we can look forward to building upon the kinds of fantastic support services that One Parent Family Scotland already has in place and truly transform the lives of mums and dads, but more importantly, transform the lives of our children. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I now call on Malcolm Chisholm to be followed by Claire Adamson, four minutes. Uh, so thereby, so please. I'd like to congratulate Christina McKelvey on bringing forward this uh, motion and uh, also, of course, pay tribute to the work of uh, One Parent Family Scotland, who I believe were founded in 1944. So I, I certainly know in my own experience what a, a very wide range of very important work they've been doing for, for decades. And uh, Christina McKelvey obviously supported... Um, described the work that took place in her constituency and I would certainly pay tribute to the project that she described one example of many that we could cite uh, throughout Scotland and certainly there are many in Edinburgh in fact for a long time the headquarters of One Parent Family Scotland was in my constituency but unfortunately the boundary slipped slightly so it's now in Marco Biaggi's constituency but I certainly uh, over many years uh, had a very close relationship particularly when Sue Robertson was the director of One Parent Family Scotland and they certainly had a, a very big influence uh, on me uh, and my thinking on these particular matters. I think the motion uh, at the, near the beginning describes their work um, pretty succinctly when it says empower Scottish families to overcome the barriers that they encounter because if any phrase can encapsulate their work I think that does. Christina McKelvey uh, described the, the wide range of work that they do. She described a family support project in her constituency and certainly there are very many projects throughout Scotland that support particularly women but in fact in Edinburgh there is an Edinburgh Dads Club and that's certainly an area of work that one parent in Scotland uh, have been involved in for some time as well and again I should pay tribute I think to Ian Maxwell from the central organisation who uh, developed a lot of that work before he moved on to another post. Uh, Christina McKelvey also mentioned employability support because most lone parents at the time that is appropriate for them want to have the opportunity to move uh, into work but sometimes the route to employment can be a complex one and it may involve personal development training and so on and a lot of one parent families Scotland uh, work is focused on that. They also provide uh, flexible and affordable childcare services uh, including childcare at home and mobile creches and crucially they provide information and advice including uh, their lone parent helpline and I think I can claim a slight connection with that because actually I was, I was believe it or not supposed to launch this in uh, March 2002 with JK Rowling I suppose JK Rowling was supposed to launch it with me she didn't turn up I think she, I was told she was ill so I ended up actually having to launch that in Scotland myself but I certainly am pleased that it still uh, carries on and does its excellent work and of course that side of information and advice 
has led One Parent Family Scotland to get very involved in campaigning issues as well, because they know better than anyone the problems that uh, lone parents face. And clearly, Christina McKelvey has, has highlighted at the moment the welfare changes and the child poverty, which is such uh, a, a, an unfortunate feature of the caseload that uh, One Parent Families Scotland have at present. And a lot of issues, of course, have arisen because of the recent change about lone parents having to go into work. Uh, find work when they're five. And again, it's fine. Some lone parents will want to find work before that if it's appropriate for them. But I think that has caused difficulties and pressures for some parents. And I think it's perhaps been implemented differentially. And we've had the issue of, of sanctions, which I've certainly come across in my constituency, sometimes in quite appalling circumstances where a lone parent has been sanctioned really for no very good reason at all. So there's, there are lots of particular issues uh, at present. Uh, most of which, as Christina McKelvey uh, pointed out, are, are the responsibility of the Westminster Government. But if I can just repeat one point I made in the childcare debate last week, obviously because parents, lone parents, have to go into work, uh, look for work at, at five, there are many uh, lone parents who may be 25, 30 or even older who, who need to have support. And the Child Care Academy in my constituency has drawn attention to the fact that Skills Development Scotland is providing places in that uh, academy primarily for parents under 25. So I think there is an issue there for uh, Skills Development Scotland. But the last point I would make is also a point from the Child Care Centre. And this takes us back to Job Centre Plus, because clearly when parents are in training, Job Centre Plus needs to provide child care support they provide £35 a day, which is absolutely standard, but in Edinburgh, in fact, that is sometimes difficult to find childcare. And again, that's a problem for some of the lone parents who are attending the Child Care Academy and no doubt other uh, training places throughout Scotland. So there's uh, a range of issues there, but I'm certainly very happy to endorse uh, the motion and pay tribute once again to One Parent Family Scotland. Many thanks. I now call on Claire Adamson to be followed by Liz Smith. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Can I also congratulate my colleague Christina McKelvey on securing this member's debate? And can I apologise in advance if I do have to leave the chamber earlier as a previous commitment this evening? I may not hear the closing speeches. But um, we all know that families come in all sorts of shapes and sizes, um, and that the makeup of families can be from a myriad of circumstances, including bereavement. But what we do know is that without fear or favour, they all have a home at One Parent Family Scotland. I'm particularly glad to speak about the work of One Parent Family Scotland because of the work they do across my whole region as a Central Scotland MSP. Ms McKelvey has already highlighted the work in South Lanarkshire, particularly in the White Hill, White Hill Neighbourhood Centre with, with young mothers. But I would also like to particularly highlight a project in North Lanarkshire, um, the Us Together project. It's um, particularly aimed at fathers, single um, fathers, um, who, um, and the organised free activities, outings for single fathers and their children, um, including men who only have a part-time role in, in caring and maybe only see their, their children for part of the time. Um, I've been very moved in, in other debates in this chamber, and I know my, my colleague Christian Allard is, is speaking in this debate this evening, and he has highlighted some of the challenges that he has experienced as a single father, and I'm sure he'd be very interested in this project. It takes families off to soft play centres, swimming centre, play parks. They get a chance to meet and, and bond with other men who are bringing up children on their own and share their experiences. And they can get also, and I think this is one of the key um, um, strengths of one parent families is that they not only nurture the family and the, the emotional needs of the family but they also help in a range of issues that affect single parents including housing, parenting, benefit, parenting benefits, education and training and access, accessing other support areas for their family. And um, they particularly mentioned that this is available to fathers of all ages because I've said you know, parent, uh, families come in all shapes and sizes. I was particularly pleased that Ms McKelvey mentioned the One Parent Families uh, helpline, which is 0808 801 0323. Mention it again, it's very important. Um, because this also gives legal advice for unmarried fa fathers about welfare and child support issues. And I think this is an extremely important part of what the, the organisation does. I'd also like to highlight a project in the north of, of my central Scotland constituency, the Breeze Family Support Centre in Falkirk where they have support workers there to offer one-to-one -one group support for single parents. And um, again, they are looking at issues such as setting boundaries in, 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 in families, parenting skills, but also debt benefits advice 
and um, supporting mental health of the, of the families that are involved in that centre. So these are two extremely important um, projects that the, the, the um, One Parent Family Scotland are involved in in my area. And I'd also like to highlight the support that they give in the area of employability because they recognise that um, you know, for, for, for young people who find themselves um, in a caring role for, for their children um, and circumstances that maybe weren't planned out and unexpected to them, that um, this can close an awful lot of doors in their lives. But what One Parent Family Scotland do is, is support people in employability, working close with partner agencies to get an integrated package of support for families in their local communities, giving them an opportunity to have a re realistic work um, and, and, and life choices that, that, that benefit their family in the long, long run. And if we could just finish, presiding officer, by also talking about the campaigning work that um, One Parent Family Scotland do on behalf of, the, of their members and the people in which they, they, they support, including in the area of childcare, which of course is very pertinent to the debate about the Scotland's future and how important they recognise um, the ac accessible, affordable, flexible childcare to be at the heart of, of supporting families in these areas. Thank you very much, presiding officer. And thank you. Now, Colin Liz Smith could be followed by Christian Alla. Uh, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Could I uh, thank Christina McKelvey for proposing this very important uh, motion? Uh, the work that One Parent Family Scotland has been doing in its long history is uh, commendable. It's very good uh, that they are in the gallery uh, this evening. As Christina McKelvey has rightly said, being a single parent inevitably comes uh, with a whole host of challenges. Um, that parent may be young and still trying to find his or her way in the world. He or she may lack confidence as to the best way to bring up their child. They may struggle to balance uh, work commitments with childcare. They may face uh, stigmatic attitudes towards them in society, most especially if they are facing poverty uh, or issues related to abuse. And of course, if the parent or his or her child suffers also from health problems, then that uh, makes it doubly difficult. Now, over the years, uh, OPFS have brought to our attention the great number of one-parent families in Scotland, I think now estimating uh, somewhere in the region of 165,500 one-parent uh, families in, in Scotland. Um, and uh, obviously that involves, uh, I think, 281,000 children, which in both cases is a very significant rise on the statistics that we might have seen uh, for 20, 30 years ago. As Malcolm Chisholm uh, rightly said in his uh, speech, the uh, range and support uh, that OPFS provide is therefore even more important. Uh, so too is the concern that we have for those who provide uh, the frontline uh, services, often sometimes in very difficult uh, circumstances. As we all know from uh, several recent debates in this parliament, one of the biggest challenges that single parents face at the moment is finding affordable and reliable uh, childcare, made doubly difficult for single parents operating uh, on low incomes, as they uh, know that this can often be an additional uh, barrier to finding employment and being able to support themselves and a child. And again, I thought Malcolm Chisholm raised some very important points about um, some of the work that's being done uh, in his uh, Edinburgh constituency in this. I think the OPFS, their uh, Care Inspectorate Registered Child Care at Home Service, provides that quality, the real quality uh, of the uh, family uh, home that can be the, the great security for these families and that's provided uh, on a seven days a week with a mobile creche as well. I think that's uh, uh, an excellent service and it's obviously uh, very much appreciated by all those involved. Uh, as parliamentarians, we're also always receiving very strong messages about the policy measures that we could adopt to support lone parents and their childcare, most especially the facility to book uh, childcare assistant uh, perhaps by the hour rather than by the block, thus minimising some of the unnecessary expenditure and the need to work with employers to help them to be as accommodating as they possibly can when it comes to supporting parents' childcare needs. And there is an important need, I think, to encourage flexible working times to allow parents uh, to be able to uh, have their children at home at the time uh, that they want. Uh, and that's obviously particularly relevant uh, for lone parents who do not have any support at all from other family members. That flexibility, I think, would help to break down some of the uh, barriers which prevent lone parents from entering the workplace. Um, the 2011 uh, census uh, was a very stark reminder of just the uh, work that we have to do to ensure that these um, single parents can be helped. I think, as it's been uh, noted in the motion, and I know Christina McKelvey said that Margaret McTaggart would be embarrassed at this, but I think she does 
uh, deserve great credit. The shining example of the help of the, uh, in the area of the employability, which I think is uh, so important. Uh, her wise uh, counsel about the awareness and the uh, support that can be given, I think, is absolutely crucial when it comes uh, to the, the major positive influence uh, that can be provided. So I wouldn't in any way be embarrassed. I think we owe you a great uh, debt when it comes to that. So once again, Deputy President Officer, can I thank uh, Christina McKelvey and indeed the uh, OPFS for the work that they do. Many thanks. I now call on Christian Allard, after which we will move to the closing speech from the Minister. Thank you, President the Officer. And like the members before me, I would like really to uh, congratulate Christina McKelvey to bring this motion to Parliament, a very important motion uh, to recognise what one parent family Scotland uh, are brought uh, uh, to, to us in Scotland for the last 65 years of advocacy and service delivery expertise. We have 200 plus staff now and a turnover over £2 million. Pounds. Uh, I particularly enjoy Krista McElvey's uh, open, opening speech when she really made the point of mothers and fathers and all us followed behind it. Uh, uh, Michael Chisholm talked about uh, the great services for fathers now we have in Edinburgh. And he talked about the opportunity of being a, a single parent as well, uh, something uh, I recognise very, very much. I know that J.K. Rowling is a great example for single mothers, but we need to have a kind of example for single fathers as well. I think it's very, very important to have a kind of role model, uh, people understanding what, what opportunities there are out there uh, for single parents after uh, they the children are grown up, and, and du du during, during the time we are raising the, the children as well. Uh, and of course, Claire Adamson did uh, 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 point out that I, I was a single father myself uh, for more than 10 years, and that's part of myself as well. And it's the reason why I'm, I'm in Parliament today is one of the reasons why I'm in Parliament today. Uh, I think the struggling of being a single and single parent makes you realise, you know, how challenging it is. How challenging it is for, to be a single mother or to be a single father. Challenging it is for the children, challenging cities for, uh, for, for the parents. So I, I do recognise the fantastic work One Parent Family Scotland do. And, and in my region, in the northeast of Scotland, I know how much they are encouraging and helping lone parents to believe in themselves. And that is what I was talking about, that kind of belief. Uh, and of course, discover new talents and, and how a single parents can enter uh, education, training or work and take up new interests. Uh, particularly in Dundee, we've got the Community uh, Family Support Project. Uh, there's a Us Together in Dundee, supporting Scotland children and their fathers, another uh, fa father's group. And I know particularly the report uh, in the report today that uh, contributors like STV have made great contributions to enable One Parent Family Scotland to develop in innovative services such as the new Families House in Dundee, which are I would love to go and, and visit. And uh, there are flexible childcare services in Dundee as well, uh, which are the same kind of services that are replicated in rural Scotland. Sometimes we forget about rural Scotland. It's not all about, about the services deployed in towns in the central belt. It's in the north, in the northeast, and particularly rural Scotland, where you could have more challenges uh, for, for, for single parents. So uh, we've got this flexible childcare services in Aberdeenshire and in Angus, uh, home-based childcare, which is very important, which offer high-quality registered childminder in uh, your own home. And that is very, very important. When I was a single parent, I started very early in the morning, and I needed that childcare to keep working very early in the morning. You, do, you don't find that easily uh, uh, in, 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 in rural Scotland or, or, or across Scotland. And crash are provided now, and uh, uh, all, all across Aberdeenshire. And I, I do think it's it's a fantastic time to be a single parent. At last, at last, it's recognised not only at Parliament but out there. People are recognising more and more how valuable our, our families with, with, with single parents. And I would like to talk briefly as well about what uh, work we did in the uh, Equal Opportunities Committee uh, and the reason we did that work on uh, parenting and one parent uh, uh, pa parenting is because 8% of Scotland, 165,000 uh, single parents are fathers. Uh, this means, President Officer, that approximately 13,000 families in Scotland are aided by a single dad. And the Equal Opportunities Committee took evidence 
and father and parenting, and of course, one parent family Scotland uh, brought uh, to us fantastic evidence uh, to help us in, in our work. And some of the recommendations they said, if I've got time, was nursery st about nursery staff, about health visitors, and, and uh, about uh, how does it feel to be excluded? And that exclusion you can find in the single mothers is particularly uh, 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 acute regarding single fathers. And uh, one uh, was a single father did say in one of the survey uh, that society puts too many unnecessary barriers in our way. Lone parents and their children deserve better. Becoming a lone father family is difficult enough. In conclusion, presenting officer, one parent family in Scotland said that fathers they spoke to wanted to be treated as parents who have the same skills and challenges than mothers do. And of course, in the 21st century, in modern Scotland, single parents, parents must be treated equally to couples, whatever the skills or challenges. Families are not just about numbers. Close, the numbers please. of parents or the number of children in a family should not matter. Many thanks. I now call on the Minister, Aileen Campbell, seven minutes or thereby, please, Minister. Thank you, President Officer, and also thank you to Christina McKelvey for bringing this debate to the Chamber. And thanks also to the members who have stayed here this evening to show their support for One Parent Families uh, Scotland. And I'd also like to add uh, my welcome. Oh, thank you. <laughs> my welcome to uh, One Parent Family Scotland, who are here tonight in the Parliament and in the gallery uh, this evening. And I'm really pleased and delighted to see that this organisation has been recognised for their passionate work to further develop its innovative approach to family support through projects such as Transforming Lives that Christina uh, spoke about, the Edinburgh Dads Club that Malcolm Chisholm uh, spoke about, and also the Us Together project that has been uh, recently launched as well, I think uh, mentioned by uh, Claire Adamson in her remarks uh, today. Now, we want, as a government, to make Scotland the best place in the world to grow up and to allow every child to have the opportunities to flourish. We want to be a more child-friendly country and to have a culture which supports all parents and carers and which values their role, whatever shape their families take. And organisations like One Parent Family Scotland are absolutely helping us to achieve on that ambition. And I'm pleased and proud to recognise uh, this work by One Parent Family Scotland. And through my time as Minister, I've really enjoyed getting to know this organisation a bit better. And I've seen the work that they do from, through visits to Falkirk. And also attended a recent conference where the speakers who absolutely stole the show that day were the young mums who spoke passionately about... Um, what they uh, want to do and their aspirations, their hopes for their children and what they had received in terms of the support through One Parent Family Scotland. And like Christina, I found these individuals' uh, stories to be so uh, inspiring and showed the real difference, the real tangible difference that this organisation makes to individual lives and individual families as well. I also want to pay... Um, particular thanks to One Parent Family Scotland because they also sit on a number of boards and, and groups that the government has as well and provide really valuable input into the work and policy development that we take forward as a government, particularly on the advisory group for uh, child poverty, the ministerial advisory group for child poverty. Now, as we've heard this evening, One Parent Family Scotland do a number of wonderful things, focusing on key areas that make real differences to the lives of One Parent Families. And one area uh, is the support that they provide to loan parents in getting into employment. Now, employment, as many have said this evening, is seen as a gateway that serves as the means to provide for our families. But for some loan parents, finding suitable, flexible and well-paid work can be a real challenge. And that complexity was particularly noted by uh, Malcolm Chisholm's contribution. An integrated package of support provided by One Parent Family Scotland gives loan parents the training, the information and advice they need to be able to make informed choices on how, where and where, when they work. And the Scottish Government recognises the important role that flexible working pay, plays in helping loan parents manage the twin responsibilities of work and parenting. And so that we can help all parents to thrive at home and at work, we are funding a collaboration with Fathers Network Scotland, parenting across Scotland and working families to try and change the way Scotland's parents live and work. And we're also working with employers to support them in creating uh, work, workplaces which encourage a better work-life balance for, for everyone. And I think that's of particular relevance to the contribution that Christian Allard spoke, because it's got a particular focus on fathers. And I really appreciate the candidness by which Christian Allard spoke of his own experience 
as a single father and recognise the particular interest that he takes through the work in the committee of making sure that we do more to support uh, fathers contribute to their uh, lives of their children. Now, as everyone else has also recognised this evening, there is no such thing as a nuclear family anymore. And in 2011, there were 236,000 lone parent households in Scotland. That equates to 11% of all households in our country. And it's clear that families come in all shapes and sizes and that many will need to juggle multiple responsibilities. And high quality, flexible childcare, which parents can afford, as well as family friendly working practices, are crucial to Scotland's families, whatever form those families take. And I particularly applaud the childcare services that One Parent Family Scotland provides across the country, be that their home based service, their mobile creche, or their personalised care for children with additional needs. Providing this kind of uh, flexible support is vital for Scotland's families. And that's why, as a government, we're building on our previous increase in annually funded early learning and childcare provision from 412 and a half hours to 475 hours in 2007, with the further expansion to 600 hours from this August. Now, that represents a 45% increase in provision in place for three and four year olds since this government came to office and is worth up to £707 per child per year. It's also important to recognise that within the legislation that this further embeds flexibility, which I know is so important to families, eh, particularly one parent families, but also all families across Scotland. And I think it's also important to recognise that these policy developments often eh, take eh, contributions, real, real meaningful contributions from the parents themselves. And I know that One Parent Family Scotland has also fed in eh, to the development of our childcare policy. But the type of support that One Parent Families Scotland provides across Scotland doesn't just stop at employability and childcare. The specialised services that they offer to parents to help ensure that children are given the best possible chances in life is also worthy of note. Support for parents is absolutely key to improving outcomes for our children. And we want to build the knowledge, the skills and the confidence of all parents so they can be and do the best that they can for their kids. Parenting skills, advocacy, mentoring, signposting and support groups are provided by One Parent Family Scotland to help parents to overcome barriers and to take positive steps towards their family's future. And innovative projects such as Transforming Lives are invaluable and can nurture and encourage lone parents to form new relationships, friendships and networks of support. Now, the National Parenting Strategy, launched 18 months ago, is for all of Scotland's parents and acknowledges that being a mum or dad, and I think Christina McKelvey noted this, is one of the hardest and most important jobs that anyone can take on. Certainly when you come back from the maternity unit, you don't get a handbook with that wee bundle of joy, although it could be useful indeed. <laughs> And the challenges are even greater for families in difficult situations. Almost one in four children now live in lone parent households, a figure which is projected to rise further in the future. And we want to be certain that the right type of support and services exist to meet the particular needs of lone parent families. We also want to be certain that no parent or family ever feels isolated. We want to ensure they can access information, advice and support whenever they need it most. And with an investment of 18 million, we're in the process of doing this by promoting access to and participation in a comprehensive range of activities and services and by making the best use of all the resources available in order to improve community wellbeing. We want parents to recognise their strengths and to be all they can be. And that is what is so good about transforming lives. It is revealing the skills these parents have to themselves. The term that is used so often to describe that approach is an asset-based approach. And I really like the way our former Chief Medical Officer, Sir Harry Burns, describes this uh, as, as, many people, as moving people from being passive recipients of services uh, towards being active agents in their own lives. This is good for the parent. It's particularly good for the children who, of course, will go on and potentially be the parents of the future. But I think it's clear that One Parent Family Scotland also offers single parents the help through the strong relationships that are developed. And we've heard about these, uh, those working in transforming lives, particularly Margaret McTaggart, who goes clearly above and beyond the call of duty and shows just how passionate she is to help uh, these parents in her care. And that was a point made by both Christina and Elizabeth uh, Smith. So in closing, I'd like to thank Christina McKelvey and the others who have contributed to tonight's debate. And I would also like to warmly thank One Parent Family Scotland for their commitment to children and their parents across Scotland. And I wish them every success for the future. Challenges do remain. Tackling poverty, welfare reforms, all pose significant challenge 
to not only our working government, but to the work that is done by One Parent Family Scotland and others like them across the country. But we'll continue to work together in partnership to ensure, using the powers that we do have, that we can ensure that children get the very best start in life and that all parents are respected and valued for the very important role that they fulfil. So again, thank you very much to Christina McKelvey for bringing this important topic to debate this evening. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I now close this meeting of Parliament.